Without further delay, I would like to call upon Dr. Mulidhar Sharma, sir, Professor Amritas, SDMC AODP, to take over the session. Welcome to you, sir. Uh, we will start with the next chapter. Doshatha to Malakshay Rudhijaniya Madhyayam Yakshatsyamaha Etho Vata Bhavan Vedmundarhi Doshatha to Malamulam Hi Shariram Tasma Detarsham Rakshanam Ujjamanam Padharaya Now the basic concept of Ayurveda is uh, the doshas and the dhatu and there is always a confusion question like how that both dosha and the dhatu have to be interpreted from the contemporary science point of view is it different and what are the differences and so on so, before going into the Samhitas, I will try to give a brief idea of how to look at it, the doshas, from the contemporary science point of view. Now, those who have studied physics, and one of the major formulas in the physics which you have studied is Einstein's theory of relativity, where the formula is E is equal to mc square. That is E is energy and mass which results in release of the energy or rather the whole concept is based upon a fact that the molecule or an atom when it is divided it releases the energy but excuse me sir. Huh? So, the screen is not visible yes Yes, sir. Now it's good. Okay. All right. Now, uh, the whole issue is about that uh, energy and mass and the atom being convertible. The atom being convertible and the physics looks at the point like how the atom can be broken and then the release of the energy. The study starts at that point like where you give and criticizing other cutting that atom or breaking that atom in. Something like the curiosity of a child. If you give any new uh, toy to the child, what the child would do? Break it, just hit it, break it and try to open and, and see how, what are the parts. So the contemporary science looks at that point of view. But from Indian philosophy point of view, the uh, same phenomena is looked at in a different way. The Purusha, which we consider as a, the origin of uh, the uh, whole of the system, is the energy and the prakriti is the mass and the purusha and the prakriti combination of the purusha and the prakriti that's studied as such and that results in a situation where a atom is formed or a creation is formed and that's what we see as the creation so purusha and prakriti when they are bound, bound together that releases the or creation as such that's the energy the formula is the same only the issue is that the way you look at it is different. When Einstein's theory looks at the conversion of an atom to the energy and energy to, uh, whereas from Ayurveda, this uh, Indian philosophy point of view, I don't say even Ayurveda, Indian philosophy point of view is about conversion of the energy and the mass to an atom. So, uh, the fusion of the atom is the study. That's why exactly the whole fact is uh, there is a state where the, uh, there is a continuous change in the system where initially one atom may be formed and then it's broken down into energy where it becomes a vector and a vector. These are the two stages. Atom is the vector avastha and the energy status is the avyakta avastha. Avyakta, vector dham yati, vector dham, vector dham punaha, purusha trale jestehi kura bhavihi vijjate. This combination of purusha and the prakriti is uh, the same, the only thing is now you get a mathematical representation of the same uh, having that E is equal to mc square. That c square, which is the speed of light, which is considered as a constant, is uh, really questionable, like uh, whether it is really a constant or not. But the all that energy which you see is uh, what we see as a creation and uh, the look, uh, vision of uh, the creation from uh, the Indian philosophy point of view is at that fusion. Now, the theory again, that same theory, it starts with the, how that atom started, that energy and the mass fusion started. 
Now, from the contemporary science point of view, the most important theory, very popular theory, is about the Big Bang theory, where accidentally there was a collision between the particles of the atom, maybe the proton, neutron, and the electron, and that resulted in a formation of the atom. And then once the atom has started, then there was a, a continuous progression, and the, up to about 14 billion years, it took about 14 billion years to form what we see as today, the life on Earth. So initially it was an atom, then there was an initiation of a, an animate object, the light, uh, life force came in. Interestingly, sir, in the Big Bang theory, the life force, or what we call as a, the signs of life, they were not there in the beginning, and it's only an accidental issue which has resulted in a formation of an atom, and that resulted in the creation of the universe. But if you look at from Indian philosophy point of view, one of very popular in uh, the Rigveda, the Nasadiya Sukta, Nasad Asi Nasadasi Tadani Nasi Dharyutna Vyoma Paroyat Kima Avari Kukasya Shaman Amhat Kiman Si Dharam Dharam Dabhiram Namatura Si Damatam Nata Hiratya Anam Ami Asi Prakedha Ani Dabatum Sudhayat Nekam Tasma Dharnyan Napara Kim Janasam. Now this uh, shloka, the meaning of that is uh, in the beginning there was a total stand, stand still. Panti is this absolute uh, uh, stillness, but everything was there, but none of them was really could be seen. Na as, na asad asid. Even the absence of uh, a abhava padartha of uh, a object also was not existing. Na asad asid. That whatever we see as uh, existing also was not present there. There was a standstill status in the beginning. So that's why the world is considered as anadi. There was no, there is no question of adi because it was present in an inactive state. The activity started, and that activity started due to yam visus deriyatam abhuva yadivadade yadivana yo astya dhyaksha parame vyoman so anga veda yadivana veda. The uh, initiation, initiation of the activity started due to an external object. And that's what you call as a Purusha or Adhyaksha or maybe whatever you name that. So that started the activity and once the activity started, that results in a creation. Um, it's not a big bang where it was an accident. Instead, there was some force which initiated the activity. Now, in Taitri Yoga the further process, I am just trying to simplify that. Those who are interested in uh, the Anasadiya uh, Sukta and its content, uh, those who have seen the TV serial Bharat Yet Kod, uh, Discovery of India, uh, which was uh, uh, presented in the 1980s in Duradarshan. Uh, now, of course, all the episodes of that are available in YouTube. If you look at that, uh, if you search for that uh, uh, Bharat Yet Kod serial and see the first episode of that, you will get a Picturization of the whole Nar Nasriya Sutta. So, whatever I have quoted from Nasriya Sutta is only two books from the beginning and one last book. The, if at all you are interested, uh, it's a very, uh, I don't say that it's very perfect, but very interesting and uh, quite simplified uh, description and attempting to visualize the concepts of uh, the creation uh, in that serial. So, if you look at that first episode, in the last half of that episode, you will see that. And of course, the title song, song of the whole serial is uh, the same Nasadiya Sukta Shloka only. Anyway, that's the one part. Now, coming back to the, our main issue of how the creation has occurred. So, once the uh, creation has started, that activity has started in a standstill, and that's compared to curdling the uh, uh, curd asset. When you curdle the curd, um, uh, just mix that curd, then the butter will be seen, a consolidation occurs. So similarly, the process has occurred as a consolidation. So initially it is an akasha which is formed. Then akasha, vayahu, vayahu, agnihi, agnihi, akaha, adhya, prithvi, prithvya, voshadhyaha, voshadhi, bhyo, annam, anna, purushaha, sayeva, purusho, annar, samayaha, tasidam, shariram, ayam, dakshara, pakshaha, ayam, uttar, pakshaha, matma. Now, the concept of development 
according to Maitreya Upanishad, is a initially what started was a akasha, there was a space, and then it resulted in a consolidation in the form of vayu and vayu agni agni abha. Now, so initially it was a, the ini, inanimate world. Then came Sadhupatyabhyaha Oshadeyaha, the plants were formed, which is where the life started. So initially it was the inanimate atoms which were there, there was no life activity, it's only the creation of non-animate objects, and then there was the evolution, and that evolution has resulted in the plants or Oshadeyaha, Oshadeyabhyo Annam, then from the Oshadeys or the plants, then the food material was there, Anna Purushaha, the, from the Anna, the food which was consumed, there was a biological recycling, so plants, plants again producing or uh, resulting in facilitation of a active life and from that the Purusha, Purusha doesn't mean only human being, the living creature, where you will have Panchamahabhutatma and uh, Atma, so a living being started and then the Saiva Purushaha Anna Rasamayaha, the whole content of the body is a, of a living body is a, the whole universe. Whatever you have in the universe, all that five Mahabhutas, they are the same contents as such which has resulted in. Now from the contemporary science point of view, it is the same thing like where the universe was started and whatever you have seen in this is the same. The only difference is a, there was no life activity at all, totally inactive, whereas from uh, uh, Indian philosophy point of view, it started with the life activity, which is abjecta, which is not really involved in, but uh, later on it resulted in uh, the mini life activity, where the atoms fused together and then what you see as the universe now. But evolution of the same, of the life activity, is uh, again described from my Arabic point of view as uh, the uh, Panjavimshati class where the Purusha and Prakriti, then Maha, Alahankara and so on and at the end you will have the all the sensory organs, the sensations and the sensory organs. Mula Prakriti, Abhikriti, Himha, Radhyaha, Prakriti, Vikraya, Sarta, Shoda, Shaka, Stubika, Rona, Prakriti, Hina, Vikriti, Hipurusha. The same concept is described and it comes to the level of the living human beings or the our Chikitsa, Adhikrata, Purusha where you have the five sensory organs and five motor organs and the mind which will give an identity to the human being which is slightly different from the other animals. In other animals too the sensory organs are there but those sensory organs or motor organs are different and the mind, the buddhi, which is something, manas, which is something different in the human beings than the other animals. Now whether it's a sign of evolution or devolution, that's the other controversy. But anyway, human being would have an identity and that identity is because of the same process of evolution. So there is an evolution as such. Now with that Big Bang Theory, uh, the attempt, to, now I said like the physics is uh, aiming at breaking down of the molecule. The exception is now that Hadron Collider experiment, the Sun experiment, uh, which is a very uh, rather very uh, complex experiment involving multiple countries and uh, the, the, a very huge 17 kilometers long tunnel is there and in the tunnel they are having that collision and this is an attempt to create a molecule. The, there is a, a environment which is created which resembles that of the older situation and the free particles, protons, neutrons and electrons are meant to collide and then they form an atom and they take, it's claimed that in 2020 they have started uh, uh, 2018, 2018, they have successfully created one atom. So, uh, when I say that the uh, present science is or uh, physics is looking at breaking down of the molecule, the exception is they are also looking at the synthesis of the molecule. Anyway, that's the other part. Now, the Big Bang theory is uh, one theory, but there are ex other theories also, the other theories which are present, uh, practice or uh, which are observed in the current science, physics is. Uh, the steady state models, bouncing cosmological models, plasma or electric universe theory, the black hole origin theory and the simulation theory, these are the other theories. From Ayurvedic point of view, the Susti, though it's mentioned like there is a force which was invisible which started the activity. From Ayurvedic point of view, Vaidya Ketu, 
ಸ್ವಭಾವಂ ಈಶ್ವರಂ ಕಾಲಂ ಯಥಾಮ್ ನಿಯತಿ ತದಾ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ಮನ್ಯಂತೆ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಋತು ದರ್ಶನ ದ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಇನಿಶಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಕುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ಮಲ್ಟಿಪಲ್ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಥಿಯರಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಈಶ್ವರ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಥಿಯರಿ ಬಟ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಥಿಯರಿ ಈಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ನೇಚರ್ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ದೇ ಯೂನಿಯನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇನ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ಮೇ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಇಟ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ದ ಕಾಲ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಕೋ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ when that uh, status of energy stand still energy is existing for a long time by it, it can result in uh, a, a, a activity by itself due to the simple time factor or either check that is an accidental the big bang or nothing it was predetermined now the another theory is predetermined or parinama there could be a chemical reaction and that could have resulted in uh, the creation so it's a anekanta baata how the creation has occurred it's virtually there is no difference in the perception of what you see in the modern physics as well as from indian philosophy point of view the only the difference is the way you look at it the way you look at it is slightly different but it's exactly the same the steady state model and bouncing the theories they are just the other translation of the subhav ishwara kala in the chatiya now we come from that part and coming to the next level once the creation has occurred you have the atoms and the elements i think uh, chemistry i am not taking chemistry here but some basics of the chemistry once these molecules are identified they are classified and they are grouped and the boldest of the scientific model as per we know is bohr's model of atoms and periodic table mendel periodic table and this is based upon the five basic concepts of the chemical activity a mendelief table and so on and bohr's model of atom where you will have proton and neutron in the center and the uh, electrons moving around you have studied in pc and probably you may be remember at least a part of that so i am not going to that part but the important factors which you have to keep in mind are the co- basic idea of having this mendelief table is based upon the chemical property of these atoms as such now number of elements when we were studying it was 106 now it's 120 the numbers are being added okay that's not the point but still there is a very interesting issue the mendelief table would have columns of course now there are 17 or 18 columns as such out of these 18 columns these columns again are based upon primary chemical activity the column number 1 has alkaline metals which is starts from hydrogen which is lightest of the ob- uh, object and then it's uh, the uh, uh, very active molecular number 2 atom number 2 the helium is in the last column which is in noble gas so in the first line very interesting the first line hydrogen and the second number 2 is in helium the last line in between there are no objects in the column so those who have studied mendelief table have you ever thought of this questioning like why it should not be in the second column why it should have gone to the last column the issue is based upon the chemical property a alkaline material is a very active whereas a noble gas is very inactive it's inert substance the chemical activity would be varying and in the other uh, groups you have the group of earth metals where the uh, chemical reactivity is uh, slightly lesser and uh, the electron sharing property would be there can be two electrons transmitted to the others and then the main group elements where there could be a mutual exchange of the electrons from the outer circle and then the fourth group is uh, where you have all the uh, nitrogens and uh, uh, cacogens or halogens which are uh, again having a different level of chemical activity so finally these uh, columns 18 columns of uh, the periodic table they are in five categories which gives give you a differentiation of or a grading of the chemical activity very light and highly active to the more inert and uh, absolutely non active in between you have that grades of different of the difference of the activity now if you look at the concept of panchamahabhuta panchamahabhuta is exactly the same theory the instead of going for that number of 106 or 126 and so on they are categorized into five categories and their 
क्वालिटीज आर खरब द्रव चल वस्तुत्व भूजलाजल देशम आकाश से प्रति घटा दृष्टम लिंग मिथाक्रम बेस्ड अपॉन द केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज आर द फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज कैटेगरीज इन द फाइव कैटेगरीज द पृथ्वी महाभूत द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द इनर्ट केमिकल्स आर स्थूल मंद स्थिर गुरु कठिन दीज आर द टिपिकल मॉलिक्यूल सो एटम्स आर मॉलिक्यूल्स व्हिच कुड हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी दे आर आर व्हिच आर इनर्ट आई एम नॉट सेइंग दैट द द इनर्ट आर नो टू गैसेस आर पार्ट ऑफ महाभूत बट इफ यू कैटेगराइज द फिजिकल नाउ दैट कैटेगराइजेशन इज बेस्ड अपॉन द नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स प्रेजेंट ओवर द आउटर सर्किट इन द प्रेजेंट ए सिचुएशन बट वट एवर वी हैव नाउ स्टडीड इज द सिमिलर इश्यूज बट द मेटीरियल्स विच आर ऑफ ए स्थिर प्रॉपर्टी आर विच हैव ए रिलेटिव लेसर केमिकल एक्टिविटी एंड रिलेटिव हायर दे आर कैटेगराइज एज पार्थिव वेर एज दो विच आर एब्सोल्युटली लाइट एंड देन हैव ए पोरस नेचर एंड हाई एक्टिविटी दे आर आकाश महाभूत इन बिटवीन यू हैव द डिफरेंट क्वालिटीज ऑफ द पंच महाभूत सो पंच महाभूत थियरी is the basic idea of classifying the uh, mooladravyas or atoms in anus which are present over there the only issue is uh, indian philosophy is satisfied with the identifying these into five categories now later on bohr's model it started it went into the differentiation of 106 then there was evolution there are some more new atoms are invented or identify and now the number goes up to 126 or maybe 130 also according to a few so there is a gradual more and more deeper perception and more and more analytical view of the same but primarily it's based upon the five chemical concepts so whatever we see as the elements of the universe they are the five uh, mahabhutas they can be categorized into the five categories as such now this five categories again in a human body when it comes to the question of a biological activity now these five categories are present in both inanimate and animate the inanimate the non living objects when they are consumed into a living body there is a biological activity and that biological activity in the human body is again categorized into three categories the categories are i see the whole idea is the microcosm and the macrocosm microcosm is the human body macrocosm is the universe so a human body or any living object is living because it is consuming the objects from the universe food is consumed and the food is utilized metabolized and then a part of that food which is metabolized is uh, used for the building up of the body now there is a regulating force for all this now this is the basic idea the the mechanism by which the consumed food is digested and converted into the body components that's the teja or the pitta pitta dosha which is predominantly teja mahabhuta content then a part of that is so is utilized for energy and a part of that is can utilized for building up of the body and that the anabolic aspects they are the kapha mahabhuta and there is a force a complex force which maintains this balance there is neither a increase the production of the energy nor an increase the production of the body contents and whole process goes on smoothly and that regulation force is regulated by the akashi and vayu uh, dravyas and that's vata doshas so kapha dosha pitta dosha vata dosha is a, the basically from this idea of the universe the relations between the human being with the universe there is nothing against physics or that physics also accept this the only thing is the words which you way the way you look at it and the way you describe it is different so why vakasha dhatubyam why ho agneyam pittam ambha prithivya bhum sleshma now the same the functions of these are the vata the functions are prasvandana udvahana purana viveka dharana lakshana vayu ho panchada prabhakta shriram dharayati the vayu mahabhuta is the one which is uh, uh, regulating the movements and uh, the carriage of the nutrients into the body and the filling of the body that's uh, the regulation of how much of the fluid or the other nutrients we present in the body that's decided by right? viveka the differentiation of the different objects and 
sustenance of the life. These are the major functions of the body. Now, when you say the vata dosha, it's not only the nervous system. If you look at a single cell also, then in single cell also you have these components. The ener uh, there is always a negative feedback mechanism. Uh, when the energy is taken in, I, am, I have just taken up this from a biology source. Source is that the whole cell is living because the nutrients are food is taken in and then the food is digested by the different chemical activity and this digestion process is controlled by a negative feedback mechanism. Whenever there is a need for certain specific type of the food substance that is taken in and when it, the cell has a sufficiency that is uh, uh, stopped there and some of these may be converted into some you have that essential, non-essential amino acids. Some of those substances which cannot be formed in the body, some of the substances can be formed in the body, they may be converted and this kind of the force is the Vatamaha Bhuta which is present in every cell. The mechanisms of production of the energy which we give, attribute to the mitochondria and all the cellular enzymes, that's the Pitta. Raga Patti Goja Stejo Medha Gushma Krata Pittam Pachala Pravyaptam Agni Karmana Anugraham Karoti. So in each cell you can see the Vata Pitta Dhapa. Or uh, when it comes to the whole body again, you have uh, from a unicellular organism to multicellular organism, then these functions are converted into systems. And these systems now are recognized as a, the Vata Pitta Mahamuta uh, or Vata Pitta Kapha Doshas in the practical situations as such. So this concept has to be kept in mind. Now, still there is, uh, why that kind of a difference? From my point of view, there is a perception of the body in the contemporary science and the modern science. The modern science looks at the body by studying the structure, giving more importance in the structure. Like when you look at a building, uh, if you are a civil engineer, you will be considering the amount of the mortar, brick and so on, and the other uh, dynamics of that building. But for a common user, you will find the difference between a building of a college, building of the hostel, building of the hotel, or building of that uh, toilet. The, of course, the structures are the same. The mortar, brick is the same. But when you enter into the hospital or when you enter into the hotel, the, your emotions, your reactions would be different. I hope so. There would be a difference. And that difference is certain. So when you enter a temple, the, your attitude and the whole environment is different. Now this difference is uh, what we, the Ayurveda gives the maximum value. Whereas from the structural point of view, the co contemporary modern science looks at the body with this idea. Of course, I don't say that any one view is superior or one view is less superior. Both the views are necessary. You cannot neglect these sentimental or subtle views as well as the other, the practical objective views. There is a need to bridge both these, but the, when the difference in the perception, whatever we say as a, there is a difference and it's difficult to conceive the modern concepts in Ayurveda, that kind of a view has occurred because of this difference in the perception. If you have a broader vision of looking at this with this idea, uh, it's uh, quite possible to see that. Now, this what I have just uh, suggested, like these are looking at the same universe across a wall. And because you are in the across of the wall, you feel that it's a difference. But suppose you grow high and then look at the uh, community point where you can look at the other side, then there is a no difference. So all that what you have to do is uh, develop your perception on both the sides. It's not only from this contemporary as well as the modern side. The vision has to be uh, enhanced. So once you develop that, there is no difference as such. With this, I think I don't waste much more time on these issues. We'll like uh, straight go into the next part of the chapter which we are discussing. So this was diversion, unnecessary diversion, but I think uh, it was necessary. That kind of an issue was uh, necessary. Now, the next is about the dhatus. The dhatus are again not simply what we translate as tissues. It's about the functional utility of the body. A part of this part issue we have discussed in the previous chapter in the Shonita Varnaniya Dhyaya. The rasa and the rakta, we have discussed that to a certain extent. 
the difference between the rasa and the rakta, how they are perceived. Rasa is about that dynamic contents, hydrodynamic contents of the blood, which maintains the circulation, whereas the rakta is the oxygenation function, and that volume and the oxygenation, these are the two different issues when you go into the clinical assessment of a shock or management of a shock, blood loss, etc. That's what we have discussed the other way. So, rasa pustim priyam, rakta pustim te paroti, rakta marna prasadam mamsa pustim te jivayati. Then the mamsam sharira pustim medasascha, medas neha sedo dhradatvam pustim asthaam cha, asthini daha dehadaranam madhya pustim cha, madhya asneham balam shukra pustim puranam asthaam te karoti, shukra pustim and puranam asthaam te karoti, shukram dhairyam chavanam pritim dehadaram harsham vijartham cha, I think this is something where very often there is a wrong perception of a translation of these as mams as some tissue and medas as some tissue. I don't go into that level of that kind of a perception. Instead, these should be looked at the basic idea of the functions as such. Very popularly, the people translate the medas as the fat and mams as the muscles. If you look at the real text and then if you look at the real functions there, then you may have a different view. The mamsava head be tayor mulam snayhum pajam rakava hascha. The mamsava srotas are at the subcutaneous level, the pakka, and then the muscle, the snayu. In between, the mamsava srotas is located. Tatra vidya se shvayatuhu mamsa shoshaha sira granthaya maranancha. If at all there is an impact on the mamsava srotas, there could be swelling and there could be atrophy of what we consider as the mamsa and the sira granthai, the, there could be abnormalities of nodules, lipomas, may be formed. Medova head way, whereas the medos srotas, it has a origin of srotas, vrukka mula mopa vahanacha, vrukka, the kidneys are the major sources and the impairment of that would be resulting in swedagamanam, snigdhagamata, Talushoshaha, Sturashopata, Pipasaja. These symptoms related to the fluid and electrolyte imbalance, where there could be the excess of sweating, the, there could be edema presented, dryness of the mouth, and the uh, anasarka, these could be the consequences of the medus impairment. So, medus impairment results in a clinical signs of a <coughs> the, uh, fluid and electrolyte imbalance. Mansa, is the one which produces the lepaha, a covering over the body, prinam, jivanam, lepaha, it produces a covering. Sharira pustim, it gives an appearance of the body, that's these functions are carried by the adipose tissues. In the adipose tissues again, you have two categories, mainly the white adipose tissue, brown adipose tissue, and then of course the beige color adipose tissue. And this again uh, is from the physiology, Probably most of those who have studied the basic physiology might not have gone, gone to this level, but there is a huge difference in the function. The white adipose tissue is the one which gives mainly the support in, of the storing of the energy, functions of the storing of the energy, and what we see as generally considered as a fat, uh, obesity and so on, it's related to that. Whereas the brown adipose tissue and the big adipose tissue, they have more of a functional utility, where they will be used for creation of the utilization of the energy, heat production, and they are biologically more active. The biologically less active adipose tissue is the white adipose tissue, whereas biologically more active adipose tissues are the brown and the beige adipose tissue. Brown and beige adipose tissues have a greater relationship with the, the fluid and electrical balance. So when you say obesity, it's not, obesity could be again of two categories. Obesity due to an increase in the adipose tissue, they are relatively minor. Majority of those patients who are overweight, they may have more of fluid accumulated in the body. So fluid, water, uh, stored obesity or overweight conditions. They are more clinically important than really the accumulation of fat. Now, that's another issue. We'll come to that part also maybe in due course of time and we discuss more of that issue later on. So anyway, when uh, I won't consider any dhatu as a tissue, it's about these functions. But if at all there has to be an attribution of any of the dhatus, maybe that tissues, the 
adipose tissue white adipose tissue which forms the covering below the body skin and then it acts as a packet material between the organs of the body reduces the friction that's the maybe the mamsa dhatu so majority of that whereas the phenomena which maintains a fluid and related balance which is closely related to the vascular structures of the kidney and then the whole of the system that adipose tissue particularly the uh, brown and uh, the uh, big adipose tissues the uh, physiologically active adipose tissues they have a very advanced functions of maintenance of the energy and the insulating it's also maintenance of the adip, uh, kind, uh, secretions has an endocrine function and is closely related to the fluid and electrolyte balance of the body and uh, that's uh, the real the medo dhatu as such now mamsa dhatu again uh, the medo dhatu the adipose tissue again also has uh, something to do with the, the growth of the bone and the muscles the growth factors of the myokines and the osteokines they are originating from the adipose tissue so that idea like uh, the medus results in asti which may not be seen uh, studied in the regular, regular physiology study but the uh, presence of these kinds uh, the enzymes which are necessary for the growth of these uh, uh, tissues they are seen in various tissues the interdependence of the various tissues in the form of these uh, uh, enzymes which help in development which are in general called as kinds then you have that myokines osteokines and so on uh, or adipokines this kind of interrelationship does exist so the concept of one dhatu depending upon the other and one dhatu helping in the growth of the other is absolutely true uh, it may not be in that gross view of conversion of one to the other see it's like uh, not the mamsa to meda meda sasti in the sense it's not converted instead interdependence of uh, these multiple functions is uh, the basic issue which you have to perceive now the same uh, the factor which you have mentioned like uh, the relations between that fluid and electrolyte balance the whole issue is again multiple organ involvement and there is a role for the adipose tissue too major though we say lungs and the kidneys are the major source of that now lungs and the kidney but charaka has said as a root cause and upavahanam as mula of the medus so medus is a mainly the organ system i don't say tissue is an organ system which helps in the maintenance of the fluid and electrolyte balance is not simply to be translated as a adipose tissue that kind of a perception or translation of a dhatu into a tissue may be a space of text too in the beginning in the beginning when you enter into the course to have an idea that could be put in but once you come to the practical clinical aspects that has to be unlearned to use the words of Shivji. Um, it has to be unlearned and then relearned. So there is a need to unlearn those things and relearn those things. Similarly, the Majja is a, again, it's not only the bone marrow, the active functions of the Majja have to be recognized. The Sula Stishu Visheshena Majja to Abhyanta Rashida Asheta Reshu Sarveshu Saraktam Medam Chere Majja has, a, it's not only the bone marrow, the active functions of the Majja which is essential for the production of all the RBCs and the whole immunological mechanisms, all that immunological mechanisms which are dependent on the, uh, t these uh, myeloid cells, uh, categories, myeloid cells. So one of the very crucial organ system is uh, the bone marrow and the hemopiasis as well as uh, the immune mechanisms. These are the Majjadhatu which is a sign of uh, higher evolution and uh, maybe one of the important factors which are is necessary for a sustenance of the life and the homeostatics, homeostasis of the body that hemopiasis and the bone marrow functions have a greater role. Then the shukradhatu, uh, as we I think a part which we have discussed earlier, shukradhatu is not only the semen, in each and every cell there is a productivity, the uh, reproducibility, that reproducibility is uh, now can be assessed, the reproductive capability can be assessed by looking at the 
studying the genes and the genes morphology contents and nucleic acid contents by that you can predict about that and these divisions could be at each level mitosis each of the cells either it could be mitosis meiosis mitosis results in haploid and meiosis results in diploid cells and that haploid cells they need the other gametes to form the further progression so these are all the different source of the production so all these are the basic idea of the shukrasatu and of course the ultimately in a human being the visible formation visible form of that shukrasatu could be the semen and the ovum so it's not only the semen and ovum which is a shukrasatu we need to consider the even a single cell in a single cell that needs to be considered now still i think if you are all confused still I, have, I i don't think that you may have now perceived it so well make uh, have confusion so if at all you have confusion i will try to explain with a, a simple model now you are looking at a computer and when you look at the computer you see computer you bother about the operating system the software and so on but a computer engineer looks at the computer in forms in the way of uh, these dependent components the bus and then that uh, disk and so on i don't even know the names of that uh, but for a practical user uh, or a simple user who uses the computer regularly you don't need to have any of these ideas of these components all that you know, know is about the software and how to use the software so i really view of the dhatu is about the view of the software whereas the perception of the contemporary science is about uh, the looking at these different parts which help in the presentation of the software i don't think that any one view is complete so a view of uh, the uh, software as well as a view of the hardware both of them may be necessary if you want to go to that level where you achieve the perfection but for a practical user a software view is enough and if at all a person who has only a software view but doesn't have a view of uh, the hardware and try to meddle with it what happens to the computer at then it has to be thrown so unless you have a perfect knowledge on both the sides don't try to meddle that's all the issue again a bit diversion again we come back to the next the next after the thatu is the mala the malas are the purisha mutra swel purisha upastamam vayagnidharanam cha basti purna vikleraka to mutram swedaha kleda pak sukmari kada now when there is a assimilation of the contents from the universe the macrocosm microcosm relationship and then the substances the mahabhutas are utilized in the body there will be some portion which is to be excreted expelled out so all that which is present is not necessary and these are mainly the purisha the fecal material and the urine and then the sweat now this is relation in relation to the human being in a single cell also you have the excretion and these excreted products may be considered as particulate liquid as such so that could be the way we can make out that but in a human being that integral body you have a separate system of that excretion and these excretory products are purisha and purisha result in upastamba the functions of that upastamba is a support so when the fecal it gives a support to the structures if there would be no fecal material then the colon would be uh, collapsed and gives a feeling of emptiness so that feeling of fullness is a due to the purisha by the nidharana that it helps in promotion of the digestive functions as well as the motility the motility of the intestines is regulated or to a certain extent impacted by that then mutra basti purana vikleda kada it maintains the kleda the humidity or the fluid content of the body and fills the bladder swedah kleda tat sukumari kada mainly is again a part of that fluid regulation and it also helps in maintenance of a healthy status of the skin now artava is also considered as a mala or maybe a dhatu upadhatu so we will not go into that controversy uh, it's not a mala but it's a upadhatu uh, which is a essential component of the body and those upadhatus vatakshanam artavam darbhadrucha the artava now there is a difference between the artava and the shukradhatu in the females shukradhatu in the females is about the ovum and the ovulation functions which we can ovulation functions all that system which is 
responsible for the ovulation function starting from the birth of the uh, child to the end these reproductive functions are there they are the shukradhatu artava is a garbhagrata the the visible flow and that mechanism which is one of the components one of the parts of that so anyway and garbha garbhalakshana garbha is also considered as padhatu by sushruta and stanyam stanyoho stanayoho apinatva jananam jivanam jeti stanya also is upadhatu as such uh, which is uh, rest, helping in maintenance of uh, the progeny tatra vidyat parirakshanam kurveta they need to be protected with this uh, uh, we uh, stop today uh, time is up we will continue in the next session if there are any questions then i'll try to answer there are no questions okay fine <coughs> Right. So we will conclude today. Right. Thank you, sir.